of my talk will be on recent trends in minimum cut algorithms. So in this talk, we'll be considering various forms of the min cut algorithm, um, the min cut problem in graphs. So this is uh, given the graph, find a minimum cardinality or weight set of edges whose removal disconnects the graph in some way. And this way will depend on uh, the problem, the specific min cut problem. So for example, the global min cut problem, all we need to do is to disconnect the graph, disconnect any two vertices from each other. For the ST min cut problem, we are also given two vertices S and T, and we want to disconnect those two specific vertices. And another uh, variant, which actually generalizes the above two, it's a Steiner min cut. So here we're given a subset of vertices as the terminals, and we just want to disconnect any two vertices, terminals from each other. So for example, if the terminal set is just the, the two element set S and T, then this is just ST min cut. And the terminals are just all the vertices, then this is global min cut. We can also consider problems that involve computing multiple uh, min cuts. For example, the single source min cut problem, we're given a source S and we'll find for all vertices T, the min cut, the ST min cut. And finally, the, the common generalization of all these problems, the all pairs min cut, find the ST min cut for all pairs ST, uh, all pairs of vertices S and T. So this talk will be mainly considering uh, concerned about fast algorithms for, to solve these problems. Uh, one of the most well-known results, uh, well-known theorems, the Maxwell min cut theorem, shows that the ST min cut problem can be solved by a single ST max flow call. And a recent breakthrough by Chen et al. showed that this can actually be done in almost linear time, so almost off the moment. The other problems, it turns out we can reduce these problems to the ST min cut problem. So in particular, global, Steiner, and single source min cut can be trivially, trivially reduced to uh, n minus one calls to ST min cut, which in turn can be reduced to ST max flow. Um, one of the classic results uh, in the field by Gomri Hu showed that all pairs min cut can also re be reduced to n minus one calls. So this is non-trivial because the trivial reduction will require n squared calls, but they show that only n minus one calls suffice. So, but uh, for the global min cut in particular, Karger uh, devised an algorithm to solve this problem without using max flow. And this, um, this ran in near linear randomized time. So, um, so based on these uh, known results, we, kind of, we have a hierarchy of, uh, of the problem complexity of these uh, min cut uh, problems. Um, the, uh, the first group are the all pairs, single source and Steiner min cuts. They require n minus one max flows. The ST min cut uh, is by itself, they require a single max flow. And finally, there's a global min cut, which is easier than at max flow. It requires just near linear time, but only in the randomized case. So we can think of, uh, uh, we can pictorially think of uh, the hierarchy as we have a group of these, these problems. Each of them is uh, reduces to the, the each of these uh, reduces from the one be before it. And finally, we have these two incomparable problems, ST for which require one max flow and global, which require no max loss, but only uh, in the for randomized outcomes. So this was the landscape of the min cut problems before our work, and in this talk we'll consider uh, we'll be um, surveying recent progress uh, to uh, improving upon these hierarchy this hierarchy of problems. So the main question in this talk will be: Are these complexities tight, or can they be improved? So. Um, so one of the first results uh, in this direction was by myself and Demalia Panagrahi. We showed a Steiner min cut uh, in particular can be solved in just polylog max uh, calls to ST min cut. So intuitively, this just means that Steiner is closer to ST min cut than single source min cut. So it's, um, um, and at the time, this actually gave the, so this the reduction that's actually, can actually be de-randomized. And at the time it gave the fast deterministic algorithm for even global min cut. Uh, so the second result in, in this direction showed that 
actually, uh, if you take to consider all pairs min cut problem in a single source min cut, all pairs can actually be solved using polylog calls to single source min cut. So these problems are essentially equivalent of the polylog factors. And the message behind this result is that if you want to improve all pairs min cut, it suffices to consider just single source min cut. And finally, a result by myself showed that global min cut, uh, in particular, the Cargers algorithm for global min cut, can be actually de-randomized, and um, which means that global min cut actually be solved in almost linear time deterministic, again, without much scale. So based on these three results, the new landscape of the problems look like, looks like this, where Steiner has now moved from uh, before, uh, from this group to this group, where Steiner and ST are now equivalent up to polylog factors. And here we have an equivalence, essentially a polylog equivalence between all pairs and single source. And the final question remained, what about this direction here? Is, it, is there a separation between these two groups in the sense that um, these problems cannot be solved efficiently, uh, more efficiently than these, or is this also an equivalence? So more recently, uh, just this year, um, the, we, we uh, have made progress towards this question. Um, a result by Abud, Krautgammer, myself, Panagraki, Sarah North, and Chabosi, we show that single source main cut can actually be solved in polylog calls to ST main cut with one caveat, which is it requires additional additive and square time for weighted graphs. For unweighted graphs, this can be, this can be removed. And this is a very technical assumption. Um, it's not intuitive at all why this factor comes um, appears, but this is something that requires, is, that is, um, we're trying to uh, improve to just almost linear. So, um, so with this result, um, the landscape is now actually um, pretty much flat. Uh, all pairs, single source, Steiner, and ST max flows, XD min cut are pretty much all within polylog of each other. The one caveat is um, there's an n squared additive factor between these two problems, which, between these two groups. And, and of course, global mica is on its own, both for randomized and deterministic. They, it, it can be solved without max flow. So, um, so all of these all of these recent results center around uh, two key ideas. Uh, the first is a problem that uh, a new problem that we define called minimum isolating cuts. It's it can be thought of as a new primitive to find unbalanced cuts in a graph efficiently. The other the other key idea that um, drove, uh, that's driven these, this progress is this this te this technique called expanded decomposition which decomposes a given any graph into expanders, which are much easier to solve uh, for mini cut problems. So for the rest of this talk, I'll be mainly um, focusing on the min isolating cuts problem uh, for, since it's a more recent development and seeing how this primitive can be used to solve mini cut problems. So let me first just define the min isolating cuts problem. So given an undirected graph, and a set of terminals, we want to find, we want to output for each terminal, the min cut that separates that terminal from all the other terminals. So in other words, we want to find the cut isolating that terminal from everyone else. So for example, if this is the graph and the red variety of terminals, then this could be a set of isolating cuts. It turns out the cuts can, are actually disjoint. So the, the sides um, can, be, can be assumed to be disjoint. The naive solution is just, simply call ST min cut for each terminal. And this will require the size of R, the number of terminals many calls to ST min cut. But, um, but the main result um, in this direction, which we call the isolating cuts lemma, show that uh, we can actually do much better. We can solve this problem in just a logarithmic many calls. In other words, min isolating cuts has the same complexity roughly as just ST min cut. Um, so the, this algorithm itself is actually quite simple. Like the algorithm proves only two pages, but unfortunately I won't have time to go over it. Instead, I'll show how this min isolating cuts primitive can be used to solve Steiner min cut in a very simple way. So recall the Steiner min cut problem. We just want to disconnect some two given terminals from each other. And here's the algorithm. Um, we're going to sample the pro various probabilities, like geometrically decreasing probabilities, one, one half, one fourth, one eight, and so on. 
And for each of these sampling probabilities, we'll just independently sample each terminal into a new terminal set R. So we have our original term set T. For each terminal, we independently sample it into our set R with rate P. And we'll just call min isolating cuts on R. And finally, um, the min isolating cuts primitive gives us a bunch of cuts um, over each sample. For each sampling probability, we'll get a bunch, uh, we'll get a collection of cuts. We'll just output the smallest isolating cut found over all, um, all these trials. And that's the algorithm. Um, we'll show that with good probability, this gives you the sign in. Uh, for analysis, let's assume we, uh, we know the sign in min cut. So let's say it's this set S here. Um, the key observation is that if we sample it probably roughly one over the size of S, of course, we don't know this probability, but we're trying pretty much all the probabilities. If we, if we sample with this one over the size of S, then the probably sampling exactly one vertex in S is a constant. And this is just a simple probability bound. You can think of in expectation, it's, it's one if we sample with probably one over the size of S. And this random error was not too adversarial. But, um, with, with good probability, we'll sample exactly one. And this occurs, then the Steiner min cut, this cut is actually a valid isolating cut. And it can, it's easy, it's, it can be shown that um, isolating cuts are in fact Steiner min cuts. So the isolating cut for this uh, sample terminal will indeed be the Steiner min cut. So that essentially concludes my talk. Um, future directions. Uh, one of the most interesting directions, uh, in my opinion, is directed grass. So this landscape is much less understood. Um, for example, the global min cut is still, the complexity of global min cut is still unknown. Um, a recent result by Sen, myself, Narang, Kai Panagari, Sarah, Narak showed that this can be done in root and max flows. Of course, this is still far from optimal. Um, a, a very interesting open question is, can this be done in polylog max flows, or is this not possible? Um, what about Steiner min cut? Turns out this is actually surprisingly hard. Um, there are lower bounds to show this is, there's no subquadratic sub kind of algorithm. And part of the reason is because the mid isolating cuts um, technology also fails. Um, this is actually a hard problem, directed graphs. And finally, um, um, what about the expanded decomposition technique that I didn't have time to go over? It turns out, um, it turns out um, this can be generalized directed graphs, but the guarantees are much weaker. And one open problem I'm interested in is can we strengthen the direct expanded decomposition to hopefully solve, let's say, global min cut in faster time. That concludes my talk. Uh, feel free uh, to chat. Uh, feel, if you're interested in all the, any of these problems, I'd be happy to chat. Okay. Thanks for the informative talk. Yeah, maybe uh, the next speaker can set up while we take a quick question. I mean, all, all the results are for the uh, worst case analysis of the problem, yeah. right? Yeah. Just as a first step for a beyond worst case analysis, do we have any results about a random graph? Right, the right, that's a good question. So it turns out random graphs are expanders right, with high probability. So it turns out um, in particular, this technique of expander decomposition, which says that um, expanders are easy and for general graphs with decomposable expanders. It turns out um, this technology uh, applies directly to, to random graphs. I see. And so they're actually much easier than, than, than general And graphs. just to, to, to see the, to connect the line. So we believe that also the smooth analysis could be easy given that- The one analysis? A smooth analysis. Smooth analysis. A smooth analysis. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I think like, uh, yeah, because this, this problem is very combinatorial. So I'm not sure what smooth analysis means. Just to close it. So do we believe that there is an open question for the random graphs or it is more or less? I think it's more or less solved because random graphs are expanders which are much easier than general graphs. I see, thank you. Okay, let's take any other questions in the break um, and uh, move to the next talk.